Hi, everyone. I will use the microphone since so I have to be talking all day, so I'm going to save my voice a little bit. But I really enjoyed the, uh, the uh, readings that I was able to hear. And um, I, I'm always impressed when people recite their work, and that's something that I like to include as an element of my classes here at, at UNM. And so I, um, I'm going to share with you four poems, um, some old and some new. Uh, and I'll open with a poem called Family Album. I like old photographs of relatives. In black and white, their faces set like stone. They knew this was serious business. My favorite album is the one that's filled with people none of us can even name. I find the recent ones more difficult. I wonder now if anyone remembers how fiercely I refused to even stand beside him for this picture. How I shrank back from his hand and found the other side. Forever now, for future family, we will be framed like this. And no one will wonder at the way we are arranged. No one will ever wonder, since we'll be forever smiling there, our mouths all teeth. And uh, this next one has, is a poem that um, is kind of emblematic of a theme of mine, which is the, uh, the effect of, of war and trauma on, on future generations, how something gets passed down through lineage. And it's called the, the minefield. He was running with his friend from town to town. They were somewhere between Prague and Dresden. He was 14. His friend was faster and knew a shortcut through the fields they could take. He said there was lettuce growing in one of them, and they hadn't eaten all day. His friend ran a few lengths ahead, like a wild rabbit across the grass, turned his head, looked back once, and his body was scattered across the field. My father told us this one night, and then continued eating dinner. He brought them with him, the minefields. He carried them underneath his good intentions. He gave them to us in the volume of his anger, in the bruises we covered up with the sleeves, in the way he threw anything against the wall, a radio that wasn't even ours, a melon once opened like a head, in the way we still expect, years later and continents away, that anything might explode at any time, and we would have to run on alone with a vision like that, only seconds behind. I seem to be reading very dark poems today. So, <laughs> um, this one, uh, this one's kind of dark too. Um, but that's all right. I'll end with a with a cheery one. Um, this one, <laughs> or a cheerier one. So, I was just looking at it. I was like, I must be in a dark mood, or you know, it's a short amount of time. Um, this uh, actually, this is a translation um, from the Greek, and um, I um, translator as well. I think that uh, I, I I've actually only translated things that I kind of have come across, and I have felt somehow compelled to translate them, and. Um, the, the poet, uh, Yves Bonifoy, says, uh, if a work does not compel you, it is untranslatable. I have three of those at home, so I'm used to that. So. <laughs> um, but Yves Bonifoy, if a work does not uh, compel you, it is untranslatable. And um, so, so this is a, a work by Nikos Cavadias, and it's a, a poem um, called A Knife. And uh, in the Greek, it's Enamajeri. And I'll just recite you like four lines of the Greek so you can hear the sound of it in the Greek, and then I'll, I'll share with you the poem um, that my translation is. And it's a ballad. Enamajeri. Apano moe ho pando de stizonimus pigmeno, ena micro africanico ansali no majeri, oposafta pusinithun que peso me apalas, poe ho meyera tabrosa scalieri. A knife. I always carry tight on my belt, a small African knife I've had for years, the kind that are commonly seen in the north, which I bought from an old merchant in Algiers. I remember as if it were now the old dealer 
who looked like a Goya oil painting, standing next to long swords and torn uniforms in a hoarse voice saying, this knife here, which you want to buy, legend surrounds it. Everyone knows that those who have owned it, one after another, have killed someone close. Don Basilio used it to kill Donna Julia, his unfaithful wife, and Count Antonio one night secretly murdered his brother with this knife. An Italian sailor, a Greek bosun, an African in a jealous rage, his lover, hand to hand it fell into mine. I've seen many things, but this brings me terror. Bend down, look, here hold it, it's light. And see here, the anchor and coat of arms. But I would advise you to buy something else. How much? Seven francs, since you want it, it's yours. This dagger now tied on my belt. My strangeness made me take it off that shelf. Since there's no one I hate enough to kill, I fear someday I'll turn it on myself. So now I really don't want you all to worry about why I felt compelled to uh, translate that poem. You know, so I think that, um, you know, as writers and artists, what we're always doing is taking those things off the shelf that no one else wants to touch. You know, those subject matters that everyone else wants to stay away from. Like, ooh, I'm not going to take that with me, you know. Unfortunately, we writers, we sort of say, oh, maybe I'll have a little bit of that, you know. So, um, so anyway, I'll close with a poem. This is a, this is a very pretty new one. Um, because it's, uh, well, you can tell because it's about my son learning to count. It's called Counting Two. And that this, this son is three, so, you know, it has to be. You can tell it's by doing the math, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty new. Um, and uh, it's, it was a little, it was based on a little anecdote, just something that, you know, I thought at first I was writing a little vignette about him. But I realized that what the poem was about then was sort of, um, I guess, what it means to have someone in your life. And so it became a kind of love poem for me. Counting two. Suddenly, my son can count. One, two. His one, a calm, tame number. His two, a wild creature. The vowel stretching limbs, traveling continents, oceans, taking on the world in its primordial twos. Three, four, five, my practical parent self suggests. One, he answers authoritatively. And then again, the wildly gestured, two. One, two, he, he counts the flock of birds. One, two, the cars on a passing train. One, two, a march of ants, drops of desert rain. At night, exhausted from his exponential math, his head against my heart, counting beats, perhaps, to fall asleep. I fall with him, thinking of his two, his wildly gesturing hand, showing me how well he understands my little son. That two is so much more, twice as much, in fact, infinitely more than one. Thank you. Very much.